in the previous video, where we introduced the concept of countability in sets, we saw that an infinite set could still be countable. Remember that we said a set was countable if I could define a bijection between the elements of that set and some subset of the natural numbers. And I showed, for example, that the set of integers, which is clearly infinitely large, was still countable. There was still a bijection, which I could define, between the set of all integers and set of natural numbers. That isn't true for all infinite sets. There are some infinite sets which are, you can think of this as a higher order of infinity in terms of size, but which are uncountable. We can never define a bijection to a subset of the natural numbers. And those are uncountable sets or uncountably infinite sets. And in fact, if I take any finite interval of the real line, that there is an uncountably infinite number of points between any two values, any two real numbers, um, any finite distance apart. Now this is, well, it was one of the most controversial ideas in mathematics. It's now widely accepted. The famous proof of this is called Cantor's diagonalization argument, named after the mathematician Georg Cantor. Cantor's diagonalization argument shows well, in this form, not just that there is an uncountably infinite number of real numbers, but that in fact between zero and one, there is an uncountably infinite number of elements, and therefore equally between zero and two, zero and three, and in fact over the whole real line, there is an uncountably infinite number of elements. So the proof of this is a proof by contradiction. And it starts by assuming that no, there is not an, um, an uncountable list, that in fact, I can write a countable list of all real numbers between zero and one. And I'll show that assuming that shows that in fact, I lead to something contradictory. So I show that whatever this list contains, and bear in mind, I start by assuming that I have a list of all of these numbers and I map each one to a different element in the subset of natural numbers. I show that I'm missing some elements. So if I think I've got everything in the list and I show that there's other elements not in the list, I have not got everything that should be in that list. So let's start by listing everything which I'm going to claim is a list of all real natural numbers between 0 and 1. So 0 0.11733980840002 and so on is one of those. And then each line is a different real number between 0 and 1, infinitely long. Um, decimal expansions. But let's say, although that list is clearly infinite, is it countable? So I'm going to assume that that is the set of all such numbers and that it's going to be a countably infinitely long list. Now we get rid of Canto for space reasons. So let's number the first row, the number on the first row maps to one. The number on the second row maps to two, the number on the third row maps to three. And even though the list of these real numbers, there's an infinite number of rows, there is an infinite number of natural numbers. So I can map each row uniquely one to one and onto. 
um, the set of natural numbers. So if that list does contain all real numbers, then yes, I will show that it's countable. So I'll put the number indexing that one, two, three, four down the um, down the rows. But Cantor's argument looks at the digits down one diagonal and says, I can form a new decimal by adding one to each digit, but replacing the nines with zero. So this is like modular arithmetic. So let me pick there. So if I take this diagonal, then I can generate a new number, which is well, down that diagonal, I've got 10653374. So I generate the new decimal, 0.21764485. So I pick that diagonal, and all the way down that infinitely long diagonal, I just add one to the um, to the number. But bear in mind, I'm assuming that whilst it's infinitely long, I have written uniquely on each row of this infinitely long table a different real number such that all of the real numbers are in there. They all line up uniquely with a, an index in the natural numbers, thus they're countable. Remembering that this is a proof by contradiction, I want to show that this new number which I generated by adding one to each digit by, down the diagonal was not in this list. Because every row in this list is, I'm claiming, a different real number which has a natural number mapped to it, one to the first row, two to the second row, three to the third row. And that, that would work to be countable if every single number, every single real number was a row in this list. But Cantor argues that in fact, the number I've just generated is definitely not in this list. Because if I look at the top row, it's wrong in the first decimal place because it's one larger, it's a two instead of a one. If I look at the second row, it's wrong in the second decimal place because it's a one instead of a zero. If I look at the third row, it's wrong in the third decimal place because it's a seven instead of a six. So on every single row, I can at least say, no, my number is not that because it's one larger on that diagonal. So the number that I generate from this, however I line these numbers up, I can always generate another element which wasn't in the list so I've shown that the that the way I would define countability is only defining a subset of the real numbers, not all of the real numbers, to map to um, the index I would need as the subset of the natural numbers to demonstrate countability. So however far down the countable list I go, I will never find it. And it doesn't matter how big a list I write, I will always be able to generate more and more numbers which don't fit in this list. I could do it by picking a different diagonal, by adding a different amount, rather than adding one, adding two to the elements in the list. And I will always have an infinite number of values which are not in this list. So I cannot define a bijection between the natural numbers and the real numbers.